Okay. So, um, so we kind of, I, I, we kind of stopped a little bit yesterday after we, we started playing around with uh, sort of the option to, to keyframe and tween things inside of Tune Boom. Um, and what I did is I, I kind of postponed what we were going to have do today. So right now nothing is due today. Um, and we're kind of going to start on the pendulum and work through that today. So I think y'all are going to enjoy that, I think. After, I think you'll eventually enjoy it. I don't know if you'll enjoy it today, but you'll eventually enjoy it. Because it's actually really um, pretty awesome. And I think for those of you who are kind of familiar with Maya, it will start to click a little bit more. Um, but that means that screws up our entire schedule. That's all right. It happens every semester. I will rearrange this. Um, but the due dates on here now, the, the exercise that we're going to be doing today, um, we're going to go ahead and postpone that until September 16th, which is the, the pendulum animation. Um, so did anybody get a chance to, to play around with the stuff we looked at? Setting keyframes, playing around with the function editor or the version of the graph editor? You always went home and did other stuff. <laughs> I can't blame you. That first project, I know it hit you kind of hard. Anybody get a chance to do any touch up on that and submit a re revision? Okay, cool. So if you want to, I haven't looked at those yet. If you want to drop that into the original submissions folder, you can. Just make sure you've marked as revision. But after that, make sure you put it in the, the revisions folder. Yes? Um, is there a specific version of revision by Good question. So, yes the last day of class. So you can turn in revisions in this class anytime you want to up until the day of our final. Um, which is if you turn in a revision for it, let's say you get an 80, you turn in a revision on it, um, I grade that, it bumps it up to an 85, and you're like, I can do better than that, and you do another revision of it. As long as I have that by the last day of uh, the, the day that we present our finals, um, then I, I'll accept it up to that point. And, and so yeah, you can revise it repeatedly if you need to. Yeah, Charles? Um, did you say that you wanted it in the original homework folder or did you want it in the revisions folder? Either one will work for today, um, after today, in the revisions folder. Um, just because I haven't looked at it yet. And so, um, What that'll prevent is if I do any critiques or anything, you'll talk, I'll be sure that I'm critiquing the right thing and not like give you like a long critique sheet on a, a piece and then realize you already fixed all the stuff in the revisions. Okay, so I know that there's a handful of you who weren't in Animation Fundamentals, so um, I kind of showed, I showed you the, uh, some of the previous versions of the 3D Pendulum. Um, the Pendulum's kind of a, a, a common anima animation exercise because it teaches you a lot about FK, or forward kinematics, uh, in animation. Um, I'm not going to recap all of that, but forward kinematics is when um, you have a, a hierarchy that you can rotate from greatest to lowest in the hierarchy. That the you know the uh, the parent manipulates the child and, and so forth down the line. Um, so we're going to look at some stuff in Tomb Boom today, um, and pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an entire pendulum in class. Uh, I'm going to create the drawings for it. I'm going to create a simple rig for it. Um, I'm going to create some animations for it. Um, and I'm going to edit those curves. So like, I, to give you an idea of what we're actually going to be making, I'll show you one that I made earlier today in approximately an hour. Um, I have that in the editing class folder. So, this is roughly what we're going to be making today. Um, thank you. So I think a lot of you, oh yeah. And if it, did anybody else miss the attendance sheet? Okay. And so a couple people back here, so just as Samir has finished up with it, pass it back. So this is, um, this is what we created. This, I'm going to create something very similar to this. Uh, to how long, how long are you going to let me talk? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> okay. Oh, the projector was it off? <laughs> this, this is my first day teaching, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 
looks beautiful, do not um, So, uh, are, are you all able to log into the Zoom meeting? Okay, right. so those of you who've logged into that have probably already seen it, but. That it usually means something's happening. And now it's green. There it is. Okay. We'll slowly fade into view. Um, I was wondering why you weren't doing an eye. So this is roughly what um, I threw together today, um, just sort of testing around on it. This was an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes worth of work. Um, that is not a challenge, right? That, that, is, that is, I've done this before. Um, that is more of an understanding of what sort of time this saves you, right? Because you probably could not have frame by frame animated this in an hour or an hour and 15 minutes, right? Um, so, anybody else need the attendance sheet? Going once, going twice. And Sierra, how does Sierra do that? She's here, she should be here at some point. Okay, cool. If, if she comes in late, remind her to. Okay. So we're going to be making something like this today. Um, however, you are welcome to make whatever pendulum design you want. Um, this, is, this is just me making something simple, kind of, um, just, just so we can have some examples. Now, a couple of things I want you to look at in this that aren't super noticeable, but um, hopefully I'll, I'll draw your attention to it in a bit. Um, the little ball at the end of the pendulum has sort of a flashing red light, like the light's changing over time. Um, and if you look really closely, which I probably should uh, accentuate this a little bit more in, in the next version we do, um, we're getting some um, some smear framing, or it's like a some echoing of the lines um, as it goes through the middle too. And that's an extra little thing that I've added in there. Um, and I'm going to show you just some tricks of, of of why this can be really beneficial. And also, hopefully, we'll explain why we started off with frame by frame animation. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. So we'll say, I'm going to call mine pendulum in class. And I'll go ahead and create this locally. So I'm going to do this mainly in this way. Um, curious, just for a second. Okay, that was safe. So we're going to get introduced to, introduced to quite a few new things. Um, a lot of new menus. This actually works a little bit better if you have a second screen or, or like ways of setting up your own uh, layouts for this. So sometimes I'm going to have to put stuff over top of other stuff while we talk about it. So just bear with me on that. So first things first, I'm going to start with the um, with the platform of my pendulum, right? That little box that we have there. Um, I'm going to use a new tool. Uh, it's just this this tool right here. This is the rectangle tool. You'll see we also have ellipse, line, and polyline. Um, but I'm just going to use the rectangle just to show you that like we don't have to hand draw everything. Right. Um, I can do a rectangle like this. Of course, if I uh, want to go over here to my tools properties, I can change the thickness of that line. If I wanted to do something like this, get a much more boxy rectangle. Um, if I wanted to do something even thinner, um, I'm just going to do something default for my pencil one. Let's do pencil two. Yeah, that gives me a, a relatively thick line here. I'm going to make it kind of small. Now, the reason I'm, I'm doing this with this is to show you like, that it's not super hard to make edits to this. Right? If I go to my, um, my contour editor tool here, um, I can mouse over this and just start warping the shape kind of quickly. Um, I can also go in here, so I mean, I can just grab it and push it around and get, like, if I want it to be more of a, a bulgy one, right? Um, and this is a way that we can kind of be in control of what our, um, like how to, how to make a, a, our, our objects a little more cartoony. Also with the contour line, I can choose any um, 
Bezier handle I want. Um, let's just try this one over here. And you'll see that I get these tangents for it, right? So I have to nudge it a little bit first to get that, but then I should get these tangent handles. And then I'm able to adjust this and make um, whatever shape I want. I'm actually going to do something a little more um, squashed in, something like this, something like this. And again, I'm just making this edits with the, with the contour editor uh, tool here. Okay. Now, I know that this isn't how you would edit something if you were hand drawing it, just because you're having to draw so many images. But just like um, in Illustrator, we can craft for, for something we're going to rig. We can craft an illustration that looks a little bit more refined. Um, because we don't have to draw this one over and over and over again. Right. So let's sort of come up with something that we're, we're happy with. I'll, I'll stop there. Um, now, we talked earlier about how to color these objects. Um, I, again, I usually use the drawing mode for this because it makes a little bit more sense. Um, obviously, in my line color, I can just use a fill bucket and fill it on the line layer. If I want to, so I'm gonna I'm gonna call this um, my red here. I'll call this fill base, and I'm not gonna use that red. I'm gonna pick another color. Let's go pink. Pink's nice. I like pink. There we go. So I can just fill that, and if I do, that means both my fill and my line work is on the same drawing layer, right? Um, now, if I wanted to move that down to the color layer, I could also select just the color part, just click in the middle to select that, hit Control X, and then paste that into the color layer. The other way I could do that, I just went ahead and deleted it, is on my line layer, I could just hit this button here, which is going to create contour art from my line art. And what that'll do is it'll sort of push that shape down to the color layer and then I can fill the color layer. Now again, this is, this is completely up to you on how you, how you want to do that, but that means in the camera view, we have both of these layers showing. Now, two layers isn't always enough, right? I, I wish I could tell you that you could have infinite numbers of layers within that. You can, but you can have two more. So we can turn on two additional layers if you want to use them. Now, the reason I haven't told you about this yet is because some of them aren't going to render automatically. Some of them are for like making notes and stuff like that. However, you can turn them on to be something that will render. Um, but you can also use it to hide stuff, right? Like embed stuff in this, right? Let's say you, um, you wanted to create a very specific alpha mask that is associated with this drawing. Well, we can hide it on one of those other layers and it's never going to render but it's data that we can use when it comes to rigging. Yes? Um, put the color on the so uh, how to put the color on a separate layer? Um, the easiest way in your drawing mode here is, do I just select it again and delete it? Um, when I'm in my line, wait, let me just do it. Yeah, let me go ahead and delete that so you can see. When I'm in the line mode, if I just click this button right here, the one that looks like like two lines with arrows down, that's going to push whatever drawing I have in my lines layer down to my color layer, and then I can paint bucket fill that. Um, now again, I can also copy and paste stuff in between layers if I, or cut and paste. So, so if I want to add two more layers, I'm not saying you have to, but if you want to, you can. Um, we can do that under our preferences. So we're going to go to Edit, Preferences, and, oh, I should have researched this again before I went into it. Um, drawing. It's under advanced. Advanced, that's right. Advanced. Um, this very top one here, support overlay and underlay art. Okay. So if I click that and hit OK, now you'll see I have four layers over here. And the middle two are my line and my color, but I also have one above it and one underneath it. 
Now, um, I can't remember specifically which ones don't render, uh, but I believe that by default, maybe both of them don't render. Uh, what that means is if you wanted to have a sketch layer, uh, you can use the underlay for that. And let's say your art director wanted to give you some notes, they could draw their notes on the overlay layer. Right? So it's a nice way of giving feedback. But if you just need two more layers for your illustration, you can also use them that way. You just have to turn some stuff on in the layer properties, I think it is. So I think it's, I don't want to dig around for this right now, but there's a, a place in here somewhere where we can say um, that this is going to render or not. Um, yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll look at that. We'll look for that later. later. Okay, so, but right now, I don't really need those. I just decided to go ahead and turn them on. This is what I, I have for my drawing. Now again, I can, I can add whatever I want to to this. If I wanted to go through here and put a little bit more like, um, a little bit more like sketchy details in here. Um, I could do that, I could get like a little bit of these little corners here. Um, and if I want to, yes. Um, so L is for the line art, C is for your color art, and then there's an O and a U is overlay and underlay. So the two middle ones are the, the two layers we had before. You don't have to turn these on like most, I usually don't, um, but it's nice to know that they're there. I thought there were two C's, I couldn't see them. Oh no, uh, no, this is the C, this is the L, O, and U. All, all, all Q. Um, so again, if you wanted to do a little bit of coloring on your um, on your model, you can always do that on the color layer again. Uh, for right now, I'm not going to worry about any of that. I, I'm going to do um, something a little more like uh, let's put like a little vent in here or something like that. Right? Oh, get on my line layer. I'm just trying to add something that has a little bit of like. A little bit of information on it here, right? Just to keep it creative. Okay, I'll stop. So this is my, um, let's go back to my camera mode. This is my platform. This is where my platform is in my camera view. And my camera view is what we're eventually going to render out to the viewer, right? So this is good to know that like, this is how the drawing is lining up with basically the world that we're going to, to be showing you later. Now, um, right now this layer is called drawing. I'm just going to go ahead and rename that platform. And I'll go ahead and close that down. So I have a platform there. Now, part of this is I'm just wanting to show you some other drawing techniques as well. So I'm going to go ahead and make another drawing. I'm going to click the little plus sign above platform here, go to drawing. And so this is where you can choose. Do you want to have like bitmap work for your underlay and overlay so you can sketch? So all that stuff is a possibility. Um, I'm going to call this um, arm underscore one. So when we're talking about this pendulum, I want to. I want it to have three like segments to its arm, right? Arm one, arm two, and arm three. Yes. Um, oh, so you don't just tap the the plus button. You have to hold it down. I click it and hold it down, and it's going to bring up a list of stuff. And what we're looking for is a drawing. It's also Control R um, is the shortcut key for that. So if you just tap it, sometimes it'll just make a um, whatever it is that your, your mouse happens to be hovering over. So all of this stuff for the, the platform is on this platform layer. Just to make sure I don't accidentally mess that up, I'm going to go over here to that layer and lock it. And you'll see it turns red. That means I, no matter how much I want to, I can't draw on that layer, right? So for my arm layer, let's go ahead and make sort of the first segment of my arm. So I could go ahead and use that rectangle again. It's right. kind of neat. Um, and maybe I will also add an ellipse. Let's click here, start dragging. 
If I hold Shift, it does that. If I hold Alt, it does it to the center. So I could kind of do like a, a little shape, something like that, if I wanted to. And so I just have these two pieces, and then I can use my cutter tool to trim some of these pieces off. So that's all. These are separate pieces now, and I would kind of like those to be connected together just for convenience. So if I select them both and go to my tools property and click this little band-aid right here, this is going to merge our pencil lines into one, and that way I get this little like cleaner line right there. Now again, we can still edit this if we wanted to. If I wanted to go in here and make like a little bit of a warp here and here, I can. Um, I can even pull that up a little bit. Um, and I can even like make this a little less symmetrical if I wanted to. I'm probably going to go ahead and leave those two like that and just sort of dip it in in the center. Um, also, just kind of looking at it, I think I made it a little too big. I'm going to go ahead and scale that down. Um, if you hold shift and alt at the same time, it will scale toward the middle. So that'll allow me to kind of keep it in the right spot. Also, if you need to nudge anything around after you've selected it, you can use your arrow keys to kind of raise or lower that. Okay. Why not? Oh, um, it, once you select all the lines, um, you can click this little band-aid over here in Tools Properties. It's like a little blue line with a, a cross across it. And that will, it should merge them together if they're touching. So you don't absolutely have to merge those. I just do it to, basically so I can get that little sharp corner right there. So again, if I wanted to color these, I go back to my drawing. Um, I would say uh, create contour art from line art. And then in my color layer, I would go ahead and fill that with my base color. I'm going to go back to my drawing mode. I get this. Now, or my camera mode. Now, I like to just put a couple little indicator lines in here to make it um, kind of more interesting. Uh, I want to make, you know, uh, I want to remind that that's like a like a rotation point, right? Uh, maybe get like a little bit of something like that. And like, there Let's just try something. Um, and you know what? I could also go back to my color line. Let's get like a little rivet in here. What do you say? So I'll do something that's kind of in gray. A little bit of blue to the gray, a little bit of pink to the gray. So we're running through there. And then um, we'll call this metal. And so I'll choose my metal color and then just go ahead and kind of color that in. I'm coloring on the color line. So I can do that a little bit nicer, maybe. And then back on the lines layer, if I wanted to, a very fine little something like that. It's probably, it's probably a little dark in there. Yes? Could you go over how to? Um how to join two shapes together Yep. So um, I'll actually make it really quickly. So I just made something like this, right? Get you an ellipse there. So what I did to fix the places where it intersects is I used the cutter tool. Mm -hmm. So it's in here with your select tool, cutter. Mm -hmm. And then if you just drag, it'll trim out the parts you don't want, right? Uh, so let's say I didn't want that part, right? Um, and that's the shape I wanted to make. But this is still two pieces, it's this piece and then this piece. So to join those, if you select them both and then go to Tools Properties right here, 
it's this one right here. It's like a little blue line, looks like a Band-Aid kind of, or like a stitch or something. And when you click those, notice what happens like right here. When you click those, kind of connects them together. And that's really the only reason to do it. Like if your line work isn't, if your line work is really thin or something like that, then it's not necessarily um, crucial that you do that. The fact that they're touching means that you can still fill it um, correctly. So, you're welcome. So, um, I don't know, let me go ahead and, I don't wanna keep tinkering with that rivet, but not too much maybe. Uh, that'll work. Um, I'm not going to nitpick this too much right now. What I will do though, select that, and I'll make it just a little more. So I know it seems like I'm spending a lot of time on this. Um, the interesting thing about this is it's actually pretty reusable now. Right? Once I've gotten one of these, I can um, sorry, I can kind of reuse this however I want. <laughs> now I am nitpicking too much. There we go. Color. So once I have this, I just wanted to get that a little bit more centered. Um, I can reuse this in, in quite a few different ways, right? And I can actually just duplicate the entire thing out if I wanted to as a new arm. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna duplicate this entire layer. I'm gonna right click on it, duplicate selected layer. And now I have one that's just called arm for some reason. I'm gonna call it arm underscore two. And I'm going to select all of that, those mesh pieces and just kind of move those down for arm underscore two. Apparently I have to use that, yeah, this right here. So if I apply line and color art, then when I select it, it will select both line and the color art. And I can move both of those down to there. So you'll see what I'm getting is I'm basically able to start making my entire pendulum out of those same pieces. All right. Let's do that one more time. Uh, duplicate selected layer, um, arm underscore three. Again, I have my, uh, this button right here under my tools property, apply to line and color art. So I can select them both. down to there and then the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create one more I'm going to go ahead and lock all those I'm going to create one more layer and create a, a little ball at the end of this just to give it some weight yes oh selecting them both yeah. um, so over here in your tools property um, it's this this button right here it's like the two pieces of paper with the arrow down and that'll allow you to select them both. So I'm going to create one more drawing layer. I'll call this one ball. Oh, yes. You maybe had to reselect it again before you did Okay. So I'm creating my last layer, a ball layer, just so I have a a little 
wait at the end of it. Oh, apparently I'd already done that once, so now I have two. Just didn't delete one. So on this ball layer, um, I'm going to go ahead and just create an ellipse. I like to find like roughly where I want the ball to be. Again, click and start dragging. But if I hold Shift, it will keep it scaled. If I hold Alt, it will create it from a center point instead of from a top-down point. Right? And this is actually a pretty common set of shortcut keys. I think Photoshop and Illustrator will do the same thing. So, Alt and Shift. Yes. Okay, so I have a ball. I know. Um, that's kind of simple. Go ahead and move it down just a little bit. Um, you can, and again, I'm, I'm showing you how to do this. You can change this around however you want. If, if you want your ball to have spikes on it, if you want it to be a bunny instead, like it's a pendulum swinging a bunny, whatever you want to do. Completely your pendulum to make however you wish. So that's about the amount of weight I want at the end of it though. That's pretty good. Again, select that. I'm gonna go over to my drawing mode here in line. Um, push that down to the color layer. That way I can fill it with pink. And then I'll go back to my camera mode on the line layer, up, I'm gonna put a couple little crosshatch lines on here just to give it some, some grunge. Uh, I'll last two. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and save this. File, save, and it saved it as Pendulum in class. I'll give you a few minutes to kind of get caught up if anybody's wanting to call.
I'll kind of give you a few more seconds as we're, as we're kind of working on this, but um, hopefully everybody's kind of close to this point, because this is where, like, for a 2D animation class, stuff starts getting technical. Um, and it's not technical as in we're going to script anything, but it is technical in that technical direction way, right? That rigging way. So I'm going to introduce you to a couple of new things in a minute. Uh, but first and foremost, we need to understand where our objects pivot point is. And the timing at which you do this is important. Um, after you've parented a bunch of stuff together, if you go changing pivot points, it really messes stuff up. So since we're done with all of our drawings, I'm going to look and see where my pivot points are. And again, for animation, we're going to end up using these tools up here, these blue move tools. And this is different than, like there's like four different ways to move an object in Toon Boom. But these are our translate and rotate. It's like translate, rotate, scale, I think skew. What is this one? Maintain size. These are, these aren't, these aren't as important. Um, so those are all going to create keyframe animation when we use those. So if I click any of them, you'll see that I get, and I'm on my ball right now, you'll see that I get this move arrow, right? And just to show you, if, if I, like, we're on my ball layer, so notice my ball drawing right here. If I were to try to move this, I immediately get a little black dot in there. See it? Um, and so that means it's setting keyframe data, just like it does in Maya when we hit the S key, right? It's setting keyframe information about this object translates and rotates. So before I do that, I want to make sure that the pivot point is correct, right? If I'm going to rotate this object, I don't necessarily want it rotating from there, right? Um, so I'm going to, using any of these, if I click the little blue dot in the middle, I can drag that to the location where I want it to pivot from. Sorry, what did you do again, sorry? So just on the move tool, I click the little blue dot and just reposition that to the place where I want it to, to move from. Okay. Now, we're, this is the, keep in mind, I know that when I rotate this, the ball is rotating. But recognize what I'm actually rotating is anything that is drawn on that layer, right? So if I had like little, well, let's go ahead and do it real quick. If I have little like X's all over here too, right? Whatever they are. When I go to rotate that, like I'm rotating everything on that drawing layer. Okay? I'm not rotating actual drawing objects. And that's important to remember um, because that means the things on that layer can be changed. Right? If I get like two days down the road and I'm like, oh, you know what should have been on the end of that ball is a teddy bear. Right? I literally can erase that entire drawing of the ball, redraw a teddy bear on that layer, and still preserve all of my animation. Uh, we are, we'll actually may do, maybe we'll do a little bit of that uh, toward the end of this. So I have to put a pivot point for all of my objects on the location that, that they should be pivoting. Right? So I can just kind of go down them. Arm one, that's this top one up here. right? I want that to pivot from sort of the center of this little a um, uh, little uh, screw head here, right? Something like that. And usually what I'll do is I'll position it and then I'll try rotating it and seeing if that rotation feels right to me. If it does, if I release it, it'll leave that keyframe so I undo it to get rid of that keyframe. So I'm just going to make sure that all of my pivots are where I want them to be. Close enough. And then I 
Okay. Now again, I always like to check this, just click down the aisle there. Oh, I haven't moved my platform yet. So I'll go and put my platform up here. Okay, and this is where the object is going to move from and where it's going to rotate from. All right, so my, my platform is going to rotate from there. All right. um, I'm all right with that. Yeah. So if I just click down through here, that looks right. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save mine one more time, just in case I lose it. File, save. Okay, how many of you have taken technical direction? Okay, so that means when I say the word rigging, like, there's a little shiver. Right? <laughs> like, yeah. Because, like, it's, it's like literally like maybe 5% of people that go through that class are like, I love that. That was awesome, right? That's me. Oh, it's Parker. Parker is the 5%. Um, so, uh, I mean, that may, probably more than that, but it's, it's a very beneficial class, right? You, you learn how to, for those of you who haven't taken it, you learn how to set up a character or anything that you ever want to animate in a way that makes it more intuitive to animate. But that includes math and complex parent constraints and IK and all these different techniques within Maya in order to create a, a nice control system for them. So, um, so I guess both the good news and the bad news is we're not going to create rigs that have that much finite control, right? Um, we are, there are a lot of a lot of technique uh, uh, techniques that we can create. If we were going to animate like three seasons of a TV show, well then we, we would want our main character to have a lot of options to control it, just because that would mean we'd be able to get more animation out more efficiently. Um, but if I'm going to create one character that has all of like 10 seconds of screen time for the entire series, I'm not going to spend months rigging that character, right? I, for that, I may as well just draw every frame if I was going to spend months on it, right? Um, so rigging is kind of scalable a little bit. And so for this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a little simple just to kind of break us into the idea of rigging, right? Um, and and it's, it works just like these layers right here work just like the outliner does in mine. So it also works just like any other type of hierarchy structure does if you're not super familiar with Maya. Um, if you are parenting folders or nesting folders on your hard drive underneath stuff, you recognize that, let's say you have a whole bunch of pictures, right, on your computer. You have your pictures folder. And in there you have vacation pictures 2019, right? and you put those in there and you're like, all right, now you know if you move your pictures folder, all your vacation folders or vacation pictures go with it too, right? And then maybe you have the pictures with alcohol in it that mom can't see, right? You have that folder underneath vacation folders 2019, right? And that way you know like if you're gonna give pictures to your mom, you don't give her that folder. And like you can take those out, you can rearrange the structure. You know how to use a, a folder system. Right? And you understand that if you grab all of the pictures folder and you give that to mom, well then she's getting those pictures of you with a, I don't know, beer. Uh, so, <laughs> um, so that works the same here, right? If I want the platform, when I move the platform, nothing else is affected. If I want all of these other things to be affected, I want them to be a child of the platform. So I can take arm one and just click it and drag it on top of platform and release it. And now if I move the platform, the arm will go with it. Now, if I were to rotate the arm, it will still stay rotated. And if I move the platform, it still works that way, right? So I, I've just created a simple hierarchy system with that setup. Now arm two, I can just drag that on top of arm one, and then arm three on top of arm two, and then ball, I'll drag on top of arm three. 
Ta-da! We raised our penalty. Um, now there's more to it than this, but that was pretty simple, right? Like I can very easily now go through here and with these tools, not with these over here, with these tools here, I can grab my platform, I can move the whole thing over to here, I can rotate it, I can start positioning the arms down the chain, right? Um, I can very quickly get a pose on this, right? So I'm going to show you a couple of other things about that that's really nice. Um, one is um, that way I just showed you to manipulate stuff. That is like for a lot of stuff the way I still manipulate things I'm going to be animating this way. But the other thing is that um, Toon Boom or Har Harmony is actually recognizing that this is in a hierarchy. Right? It, it recognizes that more than likely you put something in a hierarchy because you want to animate it. Right? So it gives you some extra controls for that. Um, now I will, I will point out a couple of things down here on the bottom of, of our toolbar here. One is this little this little stick figure character here, right? When that little stick figure character is turned on, when it's, when it's orange like this, that means you're in animate mode. Okay, that means anything I do to this platform, you'll notice that I I get a keyframe on it, right? Now, if I go into that and set that to animate off, if I move that platform, it's permanently moved. It's like I, I moved it in Maya before I started setting keyframes. So there's no keyframe data that's being applied there. So if you need to reposition something without it setting a keyframe, that's how you do it. The other thing I want to show you is if I have the platform selected and I choose this thing, it kind of looks like a kite. See that right there? So what that's actually supposed to represent is a joint chain or a, a, a bone chain. So if you've done rigging in Maya, you recognize joints or bones, and you recognize that that's just a hierarchy chain um, of influence, right? So the cool thing about this is if I, it's kind of it's kind of picky. If I click the end here and try to move it, nothing really happens. But if I hold down Alt, I can very quickly just is it, yeah, Alt. I can just very quickly go through here and rotate these and start to get some movement on that. Now here's where it gets really cool is once I've bent them, once I've given it some information about the way I want it to bend, if I grab this end piece and move it around, I can pose it pretty quickly. Right. Um, so Alt is going to allow me to rotate individual pieces. Now I'm going to undo that really quick because for me, the one thing that's annoying about this is that the joint chain for the ball is pointing out that direction. You see that? That's just annoying. If I wanted to rotate that, I have to hold Alt and rotate the ball this way. Um, so to fix that, I can actually change that. And it's this button right here. It's the bone editing mode. So in our tools properties, bone editing mode, I can then click that. Thank. Um, how do you get it the bones and the circles? I typed it on the, the tool, but it's not doing that. Um, this one right here? Yeah. Do you have the platform selected? Yes. Oh, then you can animate the frame turns on? Yes, animate. Yeah, animate should be turned on. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, yep. And so if you hold all, you can rotate them individually, rotate the joints individually. Sometimes it's a little picky on, on how you select it, but it's a really nice little tool. Um, pretty sure it's this button right here. How do I? Why is that not letting me? Oh. Yes, that's what I want to do.
Is it letting anybody else do it? I think you can be on the layer. Oh, I bet you're right. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. Okay. And so then I can aim it that way. That makes more sense because I was trying to edit it. Okay. So once I've used that, I can sort of point that in the right direction, come back to here, and then go back up the platform. And again, like very quickly, Alt, I can start posing this thing um, pretty rapidly, right? All right. Now, I'm not going to do too much of that just yet. I'm actually going to go ahead and turn off that, that uh, IK tool. So it's it's beneficial. Um, it doesn't mean you're always going to be using that. The way you get out of it is you just choose a different tool. Right? Um, now, there's a couple of things going on with mine that are kind of in the way, which is the sorting order, right? And you'll notice that when I was changing the hierarchy, it was also changing which image is on top. And so this makes sense because it, that's what's happening. Not only are they controlling it, but it's also controlling the drawing order, right? You'll notice that um, arm one or platform is on top, right? Um, and underneath that drawing is arm one. It's kind of covering it up, which is a little annoying to me because really what I want is for arm two to be drawn on top of arm one. But if I change that hierarchy order, then I wouldn't be able to control it in the right way, right? Arm two would be controlling arm one instead of arm one controlling arm two. Um, so the order in which I've stacked these, like, will adjust both of those things. But there's a way we can fix it to make it um, look at the drawing order in completely uh, different ways, right? So here's where um, I'm going to go ahead and save one more time. I'm going to save as a new version this time. Okay. So here's where I'm going to bring up a completely new menu that isn't really that new. Um, you, you have probably used things like this other times in your life. Um, so rigging within, this, within these layers is very nice. It's very simple, right? But that just means we're very limited to what we can actually create with that. And rigging within Toon Boom actually gets very robust. So let me kind of move this over here where we can see it. Most of the rigging we are going to be doing in Toon Boom is in the node view. So if I go over here along the side, I already have my node view open. It's right here, this tab. If you don't, click this, click a little plus button somewhere and turn on your node view. Also, while you're at it, let's turn on our node library. So with our node view, I'm going to go ahead and pull this out and maybe mount it along the side over here just so we can see it. So this is a little bit of a clearer way for you to understand this. And it, what I get is this uh, jumbled like collection of like things that are strung together. And I could sit here and try to untangle them, but that's annoying. So I'm just going to select everything. And then I'm going to click one of these buttons. I usually click this one. And this will order my node view downward. Okay, so if I click that, I just usually hit OK. I don't even consider these things. It will create this much more organized version of our node view. Now, we, we saw this earlier, I know, um, when we were talking about our right node, this, this thing right here. Right? Again, this is how we're going to export out an image sequence. If I select that right node and go to Layer Properties, Layer Properties may not be open for you, under the plus sign. Um, this is where whatever layer I have selected will be able to find some information about that layer. I did not mean to change that. There we go. Um, I didn't want to change any of these. Um, now the thing... Let's sort of look at the node view and talk about what is, or sort of explore what is happening here, right? It is ordered it in the correct order, right? Platform is on top, arm is being controlled next, arm two, arm three, and then the ball, right? That is the hierarchy that we sort of built over here. Whenever we see a line coming out of the bottom of one of our nodes and going into the top of another node, that means the one that um, 
that it's coming out of the bottom of is a, a parent or a controller for whatever you're plugging it into. So the bottom is like your output, the top is like your input, right? Does that make sense? And so we have two different colored lines here. We have a, we have green lines, and then we have these blue lines. So green lines are about actual transform controls, right? If I move an object, the other object moves with it, right? So this, this set of green lines that go from the platform to arm one, this line right here, right? Uh, this little dot I have is actually just a way to make the lines less confusing. Like you can sort of lead them around in different places. Um, but this little green line that goes from there to there, right? Um, that means that it's controlling its transformation. It's controlling the translates, the rotates, all of that. The blue line is about its visibility. It's about the, the image and how the image is rendered. Okay, so that means there's two different sets of things we can control here. The visibility of it and the transformation of it. Right? And you'll notice that the blue line is not piping in from platform to arm. All of the blue lines are piping into this composite node. Composite usually means a combination of stuff, right? Like you, you, you mixed it all together, a composite mix, right? Um, and that's what this is. It's all of these different images, or all of these different drawings that I've made over here, right, um, are being mixed together into one image, and that's the one image, right? Now, we're, after it mixes it together into that one image, it's doing two things with it. It's displaying it to us over here, and it's giving us the option to write out, to export out from that composite as well. Right? So this is like a mixed together node. Right? It's like a, a way of taking all of these different input images and mixing them into one image. Right? Um, and so that's what we're getting here. And so the interesting thing about this is the order in which they are piped into the top of this changes the order in which they are visible, like top to bottom, um, in this view. Right? And so you'll see right now that the ball is all the way over to the right of this composite node. So the further to the right it is, the further to the right it is, the further back in depth it will be. The further to the left, the further forward it will be. So if I wanted that ball to be on top of the arm, I could just click this little blue dot right here and drag it over one, and now the ball is on top. And then this is this arm right here, arm two, right? It's coming in there. I want that to be underneath there. And so I'm kind of just reversing those three. And now I get the image to look the way that I want it to look. Right. Does that make sense? Did I lose anybody? If so, it's okay. Um, so this is, this node view, um, it, right now it's probably not seeming super intimidating. This can get very complicated, but not in a bad way. Like this can get very, um, like there's a lot of tools in here that we can use to, to create some really dynamic solutions to stuff. Um, I can use drawings to cut holes and do other drawings. I can use, um, I, I can create um, entire uh, lighting simulations. Like this node view gets really powerful and you can see that by our node library. If we look at our node library, there's tons of stuff that you can see in here. Like we got extra uh, color nodes or camera nodes, right? Uh, we got cutter tools that allow us to cut stuff out. Uh, we have Gaussian blur, so we can fake depth of field or make something look blurry. Um, transparencies. And this is just in our favorites section here. Um, if we go to constraints, we can get some dynamic constraints. Um, these are again like composites and co uh, combination nodes. We have 3D options. We can create actual 3D models within here. We can actually bring in Maya models and render them using Maya's render engine within 
chamber, um, which it may get a little bit complicated. I'm going to throw you a curveball here. Um, just don't worry about how I'm doing this. Just know that I am doing this. I'm going to create the hit the little plus sign here and go to my um, perspective node, right? And you're going to see like, oh, okay, I see. It's kind of got some depth in here. If I hit Control and Alt at the same time, you'll see that this is actually a full 3D program. Like, we can have depth in here. We can have things moving in the Z axis, right? Toon Boom gets really powerful at this point. The camera is actually a physical thing that is in here, and we're just looking at this from a side view at all times, right? In fact, the render that comes out of the camera is in the side view. But I can move my camera in depth. I can get realistic or real accurate parallax in here. So I can create um, 3D spaces um, and have my camera move through it with a 2D drawing. So this gets really powerful once we start getting into the, the node editor. Um, and yeah, it was all done in, uh, in Tomb Raider. Yeah, so like, there's a lot of stuff in here, and, and we're gonna we're gonna explore parts of it, not today. Okay, <laughs> don't worry. I, I just wanted to show. I want to introduce you to the node view, so when we get into our character, we can start understanding the node view, just like we sort of introduced the function uh, curves last class period. Today, we're going to understand them a little bit better. So, this is the node view. I would encourage you, like outside of class, even if you're not working on stuff for the class, opening up Toon Boom and playing around it. This gets really fun. Um, one of the things you can do in here is create real 3D lights in here that are, that are pointing in 3D space. You can create normal maps for your 2D drawings, and that means it'll make it look like it has volume to it. And then you can do real-time lighting on your 2D objects. You can have highlights um, show up on one side of the object, but not on the other. And those lights can have dynamic color changes. So I, you can do casting shadows. I can take this thing that I have here and pipe it into the composite nodes multiple times. So after I do an animation, I can do an army of pendulums. Um, like there's just a lot of things that we can do in this node editor that becomes very, um, very interesting, including particles. Um, there's whole particle simulations in here um, that we can add to, to this animation. Now, particles is actually where I'm kind of weak on this. I, I, by the time we get to that point, I will have learned it better and we'll, we'll understand it a little bit better. But even if you just want to use something canned from in here, right? Like we wanted to use a, a basic rain or something and then alter it, we could, right? So I can just drag a, a rain in here you'll see that I'm getting rain in my scene. Um, and then I can just change the uh, icons for the rain. So um, there, why do I have keyframes on all those? Okay. All right, the node view is, is really cool. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of it for now. Like I'm not gonna, we're not gonna sweat it too much right now. We're gonna go back to working on our animation. So this is all the rigging I really need to be able to do uh, for my platform. Um, now something that's kind of cool with this is I should be able now to scale my entire uh, my entire rig as well. Now I've told Shift to to get that, but I'm gonna go ahead and scale mine down so I have a little bit more room to move it, and I'm gonna go ahead and move it over right, to here, all right, and yes? Um, is there any way to reset the position of the object? I think if you just go in here, highlight all of this, right click, and say delete keyframes, it will just set it back to its default. Um, did that work, or, or is it that you're parenting them and they're shifting when you parent them? Oh, yeah, that, that works. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I'm just going to grab the platform. I'm going to go ahead and rescale this whole thing. Hold shift to, to scale it like that. Um, 
move it over to, to a starting point here. Maybe I'll make this a little bit bigger. Okay. Now, I want to set a keyframe on everything here in just a second, um, but I'm not going to do that just yet. Because right now, we're going to talk about the fact that if I drag this past that first frame, it disappears. Right? So, again, what we're doing is we are moving layers. On that layer is drawings, or are drawings. More than one, if you want there to be more than one. Right? We can also choose for there to just be one that always stays the same. Right? So if I wanted all, if I wanted my pendulum to never change, let's just go ahead and do that. I'll just go out here to, I want to extend my timeline to something further along. Yes? Um, what's the difference between a drawing and an exposure? Good, good question. So a drawing, so when we were looking in the node view, the question was, you, you all probably heard it, but just for the camera, for what's the difference between a drawing and exposure? When we go in here to our node view, um, you know, we see we, we have the drawing layers, right? Um, on that drawing layer is a series, well, that's correct. Is that the right way to put it? Yeah, I think so. So on that drawing layer is a series of, uh, you can do a series of drawings that kind of exist sort of outside of all of that, like outside of the layer. It's, it's, it's just floating in theoretical space, right? The exposure is when you choose to show which drawing, right? So let, let me go ahead and, actually, let's go ahead and do that right now. So I'm gonna go out here to the end, right? I'm gonna hide, well, let me extend my, my timeline. I think this will answer the, the question. I'm gonna go ahead and set me out to maybe 120 frames here. Highlight all of those, and then I'll hit F5. And what that's going to do is that's going to extend the exposure of that drawing that we created, like this is the drawing, right? If I go to platform, that's the drawing that we created, right? And it's going to extend the exposure of that drawing for 120 frames of each of those layers, right? So let's say I don't want that though. Let's say I wanted one of these to sort of change over time, right? So let's say I wanted this one right here, like I, like I had done before in mine, Let's say I wanted this to have like a, a, a dot on it, like a, a, a light on it, right? Let's go ahead and create a, uh, a new color. I'll use this green for right now. Um, I'll call this, we'll call this um, oh, light on. Right? And then I'll create a new layer or a new color as well. It's going to be pretty much the same. I'll call it light off and I'll just make it a darker version of that green right so pull it back something like that okay so if I were to go in here on my my ball layer right, in the drawing um, you can see that I can um, my line art, I'll go ahead and draw a new light in here, like a new circle. Oops, let's go ahead and do that with black. Alt. So I get that. And I will go ahead and fill that with light off. Right. And just to kind of show that this is a, uh, a light, we'll go ahead and put a little bit of highlight on it. There we go. That's a little too much. So, actually, one of the cool things about these colors is they can have an alpha. So I'm going to make that one like partially transparent. There we go. So now that kind of looks like a light, right? That's that's on there. It's just turned off. So that's on my drawing that is exposed all the way across through there, right? And if I go to my layers, layer properties,
Oh, I'm sorry. I'll come back to that. Um, so if I want this to change, let me go ahead and delete a bunch of these exposures. Back to say like here. I'll go ahead and hit delete. So those, that drawing exists up to this point. Um, even after that, the drawing exists, right? On frame 12, the drawing exists. We're just not exposing it on our time, right? So if I click this button right here, I'm creating a duplicate of that drawing, right? So it looks just like the previous drawing, um, but now I can change it. If I wanted to go in here and change the color on this drawing of that light to be this color. So now what happens is when we get to it, it switches it on, right? So it feels like that light's turning on. And I can turn that exposure up to there, hit F5, right? So here's the cool thing about that. If I go to my library, which I know we haven't really looked at that yet, and for the most part, there, there's actually another way I'll, I'll show you how to do this later. I may, I may show you. If I go to the library uh, tab, you'll see right here, drawing substitution. And so drawing substitution, we see that that's ball number two that I'm currently on, right? And if I go to ball number one, right, um, I, I, I can see that that's the green one, right? It's, it's ball one, ball two. So if I were to extend this out to say here, F5, right, and go to like right here in the middle, I can choose to switch out that drawing. If I wanted to go back to ball number one, I can. Right? And so now my animation will go from ball two to ball one. So that drawing exists. I could actually go in here too and I could draw something like this, right? And now that's drawing number three. But I never have to use drawing number three if I don't want to, right? I can always leave um, drawing number two in there. So these drawings exist. I'm only choosing to expose different ones. And they kind of exist within the layer. So if I duplicate this whole layer, that new layer has drawing one, drawing two, drawing three. And if I change drawing two, it doesn't change it on all the layers. It's ways I can turn on and off um, frames in that animation, right? So it's, it's actually really cool because we have, this is kind of new inside of um, Toon Boom. We have a drawing substitutions tab. And so it's all the different drawings that are on your layer. So where this becomes really beneficial, we'll look at this later, is like lip sync, right? I can draw 50 different mouth shapes for my character and just switch in and out of which frames I want to have. I can draw 20 different hand poses for my character and just switch in and out of it. So that's why we kind of did the frame by frame animation is because you can have some control of choosing frames from that timeline within your rigging. Um, so does that, does that kind of make sense? Okay. So I'm actually going to do um, something different. I just got that blinking light now, right? I'm gonna go ahead and cycle that. So I will highlight, a few more of those. I will highlight this range. So the way I'd done it last time is I just said, um, copy those cells from the timeline and then I pasted them as a cycle. But I can also just highlight them and say, create cycle and click this button to increase the number a few times and it should just make a cycle of that flashing now. and remember since i'm rotating and moving the layer that's going to happen independent of this movement right if i move that it's still going to continue to blink in that new location does that make sense okay so what i'm going to do now i'm going to save one more time I'm going to highlight, uh, like, the animation from this point is much more like how we animated in Maya. I'm going to highlight all of the things I want to animate, all of the layers I want to animate. So I just click the top one, I can hold shift and click the bottom one. And I'm going to hit F6 to set a keyframe. So I just set a keyframe on all of my layers that I want to animate on frame one, right? Now, if I want to, um, if I want to set another keyframe, I just move my timeline. I go ahead and start moving the objects I want to move. Right? So I want to anticipate back with my platform, maybe, uh, maybe up a little bit. And you're seeing I'm automatically getting some keyframes. If I click, the, click this little plus, 
you'll see that so far I've only moved position X and Y. So those are the only two things that have been keyed. Um, I could also rotate it a little bit, and you'll see I automatically get a keyframe there. Right? Um, if I hit F6, it keyframes all the things in that. So I go ahead and minimize that because I don't have to look at that all the time. And I'm going to go ahead and start um, posing my entire rig. So again, I can do that kind of quickly now with the arm using this IK tool. Right? I can hold down Alt and sort of pose a little bit of drag in here. Right? Something like this. And so now, as my pendulum moves back, it drags behind. I want to push that anticipation just a little bit longer. Um, so go ahead and grab that, move it back, move it down a little bit, maybe even rotate. But since it's kind of holding that, that means that the rest of that, the rest of this pendulum is going to sort of start to swing through. So maybe I'll do something like that. Get them to sort of overlapping like this. Okay. And so now I have these two keyframes. Now, what I would encourage you to do is not sort of pay attention to what is happening in between, right? Like, that animation looks bad. It's very like, thong, 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 thong. like it's very robotic looking. Just don't worry about that for a little while. We're, we're gonna fix that later. Right now, sort of trust in your ability to set keyframes on this motion to create something believable. So I want this, maybe I'll go ahead and Drag those keyframes back a little bit so it happens quicker, but it holds that anticipation longer. And then I want this to sort of shoot across the screen kind of quickly. So maybe like that. Right. And hit F6. My move tool. This is my platform. I'm going to move it over to here. Right. Um, maybe rotate it just a little bit. And because it's moving kind of quickly, I'm going to go ahead and, and drag that pendulum back even more. Rotation on it. So now we get that motion. Now everything moves in arcs, so I'm going to go ahead and put me a little bit of a dip right here in the middle. Dip it down. Rotate it. I, I know I'm going kind of quick here, so don't, don't sweat it too much if you're if you're just sort of following along or just like listening as I, as I go on this. Um, so I'm going to have it overshoot just a little bit as it goes up here. So overshoot up. Back. And at the same time we're going to so swing our arm back through because we get that overshoot as well. There we go. And then we're going to sort of settle back into um, sort of a resting pose. The hardest part of this for me is to not revert back to Maya's shortcut keys. I keep wanting to hit W, E, and R, and that's really gonna mess me up. Um, now I want a little bit of settle on this. So, um, so I'm actually gonna drag these keyframes a little further along here, where this is where it's settling back to. I'll maybe dip in the middle on the platform here, it's settling back. Something like this, but I'm going to use these. Um, I'm going to use these points as sort of swing poses, F6. and then just on the leg part, just on these parts, I'm going to go ahead and set two more key poses, just for some swinging. And I'm going to actually so it yeah, hits there that part. Should go ahead and start rotating back, I think. So 
So I'm sure I'm gonna have to adjust some timing on this. And there it's forward again. I think I've hit. I think I forgot to hit F6 on something. So let's see what that's looking like. There we go. It's feeling better. It's a little too fast, so I'm just going to go ahead and shift some of my keyframes. I have to be careful because this will also shift the drawings we have below if we're not careful as well. It looks like that's already happened. But I can always fix those later. So let's see what that looks like. Too fast. Okay, I'm going to leave it there, even though it's um, that's still a little fast, I think. Uh, F6, I may go ahead and let it sort of settle just a little bit on this last part. I'm going to go ahead and sort of trim my animation back to about right there. And so now what we got is that. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. I know watching somebody else keyframe stuff is not super exciting. My, uh, my wife always tells me how boring my job looks. She's like, this is so boring. It just stares at a bunch of curves all day long. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually, yeah, it really is exciting for an animator. I, I'm having a blast. Uh, <laughs> so, sorry if it's not super fun to watch. Okay, so we have this, though, and, and, and we can watch it, and it's going to be bad, right? Like, it just, Toon Boom gives us the simplest options possible. And what it actually does is it, it creates all of those curves for this. It creates them linearly. Right? So there's no easing in this at all. It's just a straight transition from one drawing or from one location to the other. Um, if I were to create, um, we'll, we'll do it actually. Let's, let's go ahead and put um, our, you can see some of our motion trails are just, they're just boring. Like it, it's a, it's like a, um, yeah. But the spacing is, is not interesting. The um, let's see, that's the right way of doing this. You can see like just the transitions. You see how like there are straight lines from A to B, and then it hits a wall there and bounces back up to there. Hits a wall, bounces up to there. So this is where the function curve comes in. All right. Did anybody get a chance to play with that in between this class and last class? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to clean up all of the curves on this, which is way more exciting than watching me set keyframes. Not really. It's not super exciting, but this is important. Um, so if I select, the way I edit any curves in any animation program, 3D, 2D, whatever, is I always start with the highest point on the hierarchy that I can, right? Uh, and that's because that's the biggest source of the motion, right? The platform motion is what moves this entire thing all around. And if that's messed up, I'll never be able to tell if the pendulum or if the little ball on the end is messed up or not, right? So I have to fix 
the highest thing in the hierarchy first. So I choose the platform. I'm going to go out to function. Now, if you don't have function, hit the plus sign, add your function to it. Now, the only way that anything will show up down here in our function editor, though, is if we select it in our timeline first. So select uh, platform, function, and I get this. I don't want everything. I just want the platform. So let's just select platform function. Now for some reason, it's showing me everything anyway. So this has got my platform, my arm, my arm, arm three, arm two, arm one, and I can sort of hide those just by unchecking them. So I'm going to go through here and uncheck everything except for my platform. Now with my platform, you'll see that I have position X, position Y, position Z. Now, position Z is interesting because I'm, that's a third axis, right? That's depth. That's if I wanted my pendulum to get further away from me. Um, so that is an option. It's not one I actually used. If you look at my position Z channel, it's just a flat line. So I'm just going to uncheck that, and I'm going to look at position X first. Okay? So position X gives me this. And you'll see why that motion looks bad is because it's these sharp corners, right? They're, they're all these um, just sharp, like, hard transitions. Um, so what I usually do is I select everything, I right click, or I click on this and go to smooth, and that'll give me better transitions on my tangents once I have some tangents. And then I use this drop down menu right here to choose an easing. Now, this concept is not going to make a lot of sense to you if you're used to Maya as a, um, a keyframe, right? Or as a graphic. So let me explain what this easing is. Like if, if I click this button right here, it's kind of like this S shape. That's, I usually use one of these three. It's going to just sort of put everything in that S shape. Now, what easing is really showing me is if I select one keyframe, if I just select this one right here, this is saying how should it ease out and how should it ease in to that keyframe, right? Um, and usually, I, I think that what this is actually saying is how should it ease out of the previous keyframe and how is it easing into this one, right? So if I change this to linear, no, it's actually the other way around. So how is it easing out of this keyframe? How is it easing into the next one? And so it's doing linear for both of them if I set it to linear. If I set it to this S shape, it means that it's this one also has that S easing in and an S easing out, right? So that means that some of this stuff is going to be correct, but some of it's not. Like this is not correct. So what I'll do is I'll just go through here and fix the ones that are not correct. Okay. So. I'm going to go ahead and ask the, the question that I'm kind of dreading a little bit. How many of you have never used a graph editor before? Right, complete honesty. Really? <laughs> like, really, really? Yeah, that's not the way you're hiring. Awesome! <sighs> okay, so how many of you completely understand the graph editor? So I will, I will do a quick reminder of what this means, right? What these values mean. As the curve goes up, the value goes up, right? So position X, you notice on the, I, I, was, I was expecting some people to be like, oh yeah, my class, I, we didn't do the graph editor very much, I don't really understand. But hopefully you all kind of get the concept here. In position X, that's our side to side motion, right? That red uh, arrow. So as we go up, our object is going to go more to um, screen right. And as we go down, it's going to go more towards screen left. So just in general, things ease in and out um, as they move. So you can use this to kind of finely manipulate that motion. Now, this is not going to be much better, but it's going to be a little bit better if you just watch the platform side to side motion. It feels a little bit better now. Right? Um, now let's say I needed some extra keys in here. I can add those. I can move my timeline over to, um, let's say, like right here. And if I needed an extra key, I can click this button right here to add a keyframe. 
couple of other things we could do. If I click this, this will sort of normalize our view. And this will reset the view vertically. This will kind of reset all of the views. So these are ways of like quickly resetting stuff, right? Um, so if I wanted to add a new keyframe there, I could click it, I get a new keyframe, and that gives me more points to control. Now one of the things you're probably going to run into is it's really easy to grab this, slide these up and down, but then you're gonna to try to move it from side to side, and you're gonna be like, oh, I wanna move from side to side. Uh. So if you move it from side to side, that means we're making that keyframe happen earlier or later, right? So if I wanted this keyframe to happen later, to move it from side to side, I have to hold down the Alt key. And then it'll allow me to shift it from side to side, and then I can change the height, right? So if I wanted to change my timing of anything, I can do that by holding down Alt. Does that make sense? Okay. So again, that's only controlling our side to side motion. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Turn on my position Y. What does position Y represent? It's gonna be our up and down, right? And again, position Z is our depth. So again, translate X, Y, Z, position X, Y, Z. So position Y is going to be my up and down motion. And we can kind of see that happening, right? It goes up a little bit there, sort of stays kind of flat, dips here as it goes across, and pops back up, kind of hits a high point, and then kind of settles back there and then there, right? So again, I just want to get some, some better curves on this. Like right now, it's not a curve at all. It's just straight lines. So I select all of my keys, change this to smooth. Apparently, it already is. And then I click here, and I just choose one of these S-shaped curves. Uh, I mean, like we can kind of explore what happens if we don't choose the S-shaped curves and we choose some of the others. Uh, you can kind of tinker around with it and see what gets you closest to what you think you're going to need. But I'm just getting something that will allow me to manipulate fewer keyframes and still get a good result. Now, the thing I notice on mine right, is my, my platform moves up, and then it's very flat right there. Right? And I don't really like that. I, I, I never really like anything to completely flatten out. Um, so I'll maybe use Alt to sort of position this and sort of build this a little bit more um, intuitively. Right? Something like this, where it kind of eases into that up pose. Um, I could also add a keyframe right here and have it kind of favor down here if I wanted to. Now, why this is, if you notice this, like, if I grab this tangent, it breaks it. That's what clicking smooth does. So when I click smooth, it's kind of locking them together, right? Okay, so let's see what that feels like. Uh, okay, now if it gets a little confusing while you're watching it, remember you can always go in here and hide these things just watch the motion of your platform. Right? And that's a pretty handy way of sort of polishing this. All right, now the last thing I want to work on in my function editor for my platform is angle Z. This is really the only rotation I'm getting in this, right? It's rotating in the Z axis. And by default, it'll be turned off in the checklist here. Um, so if I select that, Highlight all of these. Again, already set to smooth. Make that sort of this S shape. Maybe a little bit strong. Like that. And then I can go through here and kind of get a little bit of rotation control on this. I can make that sort of flatten out a little bit and give it more hang time. Maybe this. So now if we watch that platform, yeah, I really like that. That's feeling much better, right? So, the function editor, if you're using keyframes like this, just like the graph editor in Maya, it's not optional. Right? This, is, this is how you do the last 20% of your animation. Um, 
doing it any other way, like I, I understand that it gets frustrating using this new tool. Doing it any other way is in the long run much harder. So that's one of the reasons this exercise exists is so you can kind of practice using this. Um, I will say you can kind of do this a little bit in bulk. I'm gonna go ahead and turn those layers back on, right? Because for me, the way I edit this is I go into my function editor and I turn on everything that has keys. Go ahead and stop and see if they show up. Why are they not showing up? So I go in here, select all those, function editor. There they are. I want to make sure I turn on angle for all of those as well, because most of those are only rotation. You see that? All those are the rotation. In fact, I could probably go through and turn off all the positions on these because really all I need to fix is the rotation on the arm and the ball. Those are the only keys I really need to fix. So since I have them all highlighted, just grab them all, make sure it's set to smooth, set that to something like that, and then just one at a time I could go through here and um, start to fix things. So I can uncheck these others just so I can see this one. And it looks pretty close. Just gotta fix maybe like this one, this one. Sounds okay. This one and this is arm two. So this is that one right there. So you'll see it kind of flattens out. So maybe I'll have it drag behind just a little longer. Arm one is the top one. And you'll see that it drags behind for quite a while there. And I get this weird little hitch right there. So I'm actually gonna have it something more like that. And then the ball. So I maybe got a little carried away on those. I'll go ahead and set those down a little bit of a smoother transition. That way I can manually control that. Let's see how that looks now. Okay. So one of the things that's kind of broken on this for me is that that settle at the end is very intense, right? That swing at the end as it's settling down. So that's one of the benefits of the function editor though, is that I have control of that now. I can grab these curves and I can scale some of that down to make that wave less intense. Now what we get is it feels like there's straggling points back to the left at the end. Oh, it's on a it right, let's see. Like right there it's not shooting back far enough, is it? Right there, that's feeling like it's a little extreme. I wonder if it's um, is, it, is it the ball? Yeah, we'll see, it's not that one. So we can we can manipulate these individually if we needed to, um, but I'm I'm not going to nitpick this one right now too much. I just wanted to kind of get something because we're getting kind of close on time here. I want to show you one more thing that you can do on this, but I'm also going to show you one of the limitations and how we rig this. Right. So one of the frustrating parts about this is that both my keyframes. So look at my bottom, my ball layer. I've kind of 
of messed up my cycle, right? Because I was going in here and grabbing the keyframe, right? And moving it. And when I was doing that, I also was changing the exposure, right? So that's why um, when I said, you know, we're, we're doing a pretty simple rig here, this is one of the limitations of this rig. Um, what we're going to learn in um, our, next, our next class is how to create a rig and how to create sort of a little node above these drawings that we can rig that makes it a little easier to control. But let's not worry about messing up the frames right now. I want to show you that this works just like in Maya, right? Because one of the things that's kind of missing from this right now is overlapping action, right? I think that all of those keys are hitting at the same time, right? And so one of the things I can do now is I can go in here and I can grab these keyframes on all of the arm pieces longer here. And I can shift those one frame later to make them happen one frame later. And I can just do this down the down the line here to um, to make that overlapping action happen. So now when we watch this, it's a little looser, right? I see what you're saying. Like, it kind of feels like it's, it's right through there. It takes it just a little too long to get to there afterwards. So what I maybe would do is grab those keyframes. No, wait, it's not that. It's those keyframes. Shift them back by a frame. I'm really making a mess there. That's feeling a little bit. Okay. So I can tinker around with that all day. Um, it's, it's something we do. Now, I will show you one more thing. Uh, again, we can always do that duplicate drawing of anything. So if I wanted to do a smear frame through here, I could still go in here create a new drawing that is a duplicate of this, and then very quickly, with some black and pink lines, this one, start drawing in some, um, some smear stuff happening here. Right, maybe something like that. And you'll see what happens is when we get to that frame right there, we get that smear line, and then maybe there, when I don't want it anymore, I'll just go back to drawing one again. And so now what we'll get is a little smear line right to the middle there. In fact, if I wanted to go here to this one, duplicate that one, I could even um, Go in here and kind of adjust all of these and make them kind of bend down a little bit more if I wanted to, right? Something more like, eh. all right, maybe that's not the best way of doing it. Um, there we go. Let's try something like that. Uh, I don't know if it works. So I've got like three drawings now that hopefully make it a little bit more of a smear. Yeah, I think I'm holding that a little too long, but you get the idea of it so you can see it. Um, okay, how do you feel about this? Yeah, I, I make them way too obvious in this and it's not working so well. It's holding a little long. But yeah, that's how I was kind of doing that in, in the previous one too. Is I just changed the... Uh... Yes? So that is the uh, that is the next thing to talk about. I'm gonna have to talk about it really quick because we have two minutes. Um, this is the exercise. I, I just did the entire exercise for you. Um, the exercise is to do um, the pendulum, and it is due on Wednesday, August 28th. What the? <laughs> Apparently, I have not edited this one. Edit HTML. It's going to be due on the 16th. 
So Monday the 16th. So um, essentially what you're doing is you are um, you're creating everything we just did. But what you're going to be turning in is a video of this, um, just a rendered out video um, on Monday. So you're welcome to use what you're doing in class, or you're welcome to do the entire thing again um, using whatever you want to. In fact, here's the really cool part of this whole thing is I can still use this to do the entire thing again, right? If I decided I didn't like that drawing, like that arm, I can go into my drawing mode here. I can select all of that, delete it, and create something completely new. I go back to my camera. That's the new arm, right? That's the new way that works. That's my wife telling me I'm late. No, it's not. I'll come in back. So now that's the entire drawing, right? Like it's going to be the entire animation like that, right? So that's one of the benefits of this. Um, work on it uh, for uh, next class period is work time because it's Friday. Um, and then the video will just be due Monday and we'll, we'll check them out. So um, I'll upload the video to YouTube. Otherwise, have a great day. I think I'm technically ending class on time, but just for sure. So, uh, let's see. All right. Yes, it's the energy.